Joining me now is Dr. Isaac Bogosh, an infectious disease expert and specialist. We appreciate you joining us today, doctor. Your thoughts Very on the pleasure. news, your initial reaction. Yeah, this is very exciting. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an incredibly exciting day. We have uh, you know, Catalin Carrico and, and, and Drew Wiseman, who are you know, very well-known scientists and really laid the groundwork for this mRNA technology that we obviously have seen with the COVID-19 vaccine rollout, but now it's really being applied to lots of other areas within infectious diseases, for other ailments and other vaccine-preventable illnesses. And then, as you pointed out, for other other ailments as well, like cancer. You know, can you use this to modify uh, an immune response to target not just infections, but other uh, but abnormal cells within your body that are cancerous cells? So there's tremendous um, potential for this technology to really improve the health of, of billions of people. And obviously, we, we need more investment in science and research to really realize the uh, the potential benefits of this. But huge credit to those two scientists who did the heavy lifting up front, especially at a time where not a lot of people paid attention to this and, or believed in them. And of course, lots of uh, conspiracy theories about mRNA. What does it mean? This decision there was, and what does this message send? That yeah. you think that them winning? Yeah, I mean it. it I was going to say it legitimizes all their research, but give me a break. I mean, we've seen how this, this technology has saved millions of lives throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. For me, the real message, well, there's, there's multiple, but one of them is we really need to double down our efforts on funding good science and good scientists. And if we look at the case of Catalin Carrico, for example, this very talented scientist did not get tenure at her institution. She did not win big grants. Uh, she had her science rejected from very significant and major uh, journals, yet she persisted because she had a good idea and she was good at what she did. And here she is winning the Nobel Prize for these ideas today with, uh, with her partner, Drew Weissman. It's a very special day. It, and it may sound a bit strange, but would we have seen, you know, you're talking about looking at possible treatments for cancer with mRNA vaccines. Would we have seen that were it not for the pandemic? That's a great point. You know, we probably would have, but it would have been farther down the field. Eventually, people would, would tinker with this and, and sort it out. But these are pioneers because they saw the potential of mRNA far earlier than anyone else. And then they had to face significant barriers. Uh, people didn't believe in their work. People didn't fund their work. People didn't fully understand their work. It wasn't prioritized. And, uh, and they persisted, especially Catalin Carrico. And I think that's, that's what's really important. Eventually, I think many might have caught on, but because of them, uh, we're seeing the, the very positive impacts of this work throughout the COVID-19 pandemic and, and probably will see earlier uh, positive impacts of this as a result of that. What are you most excited about with the mRNA vaccines, the possibilities to mention cancer treatments? What, uh, what one has caught your eye the most? So a couple of things. One is in the realm of infectious diseases, it just opens up the possibility to really prevent many more devastating infections on the planet. And we obviously think, we think about these ones like COVID-19 or influenza, but I think we can expand our scope to looking at other infections that don't get a ton of funding, that don't get a lot of attention. Uh, things like uh, tropical parasitic infectious diseases, malaria, which kills hundreds of thousands of people per year, mainly children, mainly in African settings, you know, uh, other parasitic infections that really plague the world's poor just don't have the same degree of funding or energy that goes towards it. And, and I think you can really harness mRNA for those neglected tropical diseases. And the other key area is cancer. I mean, if you can really form an immunologic response to target cancer cells and do that through mRNA, which can be rapidly um, produced and scaled in laboratory settings, you've got a, a very powerful tool, tool in the fight against cancer. So I think those are two key areas to watch for. Doctor, thank you very much for your time today. My pleasure.